All right, so today I want to talk about the pros and cons of flipping snakes for a profit. And essentially what we mean by flipping a snake is buying a snake for a lower price, increasing the price of that snake, turning around and selling that snake and making a profit on the sale of that snake. And let me tell you, it's a pretty controversial topic. There's a lot of people that get really heated over even thinking about flipping snakes, selling snakes that you didn't actually produce. Some people will absolutely refuse to flip snakes. Some people will dabble in it just a little bit, sometimes to supplement their income as far as a breeding project. And some people will base their whole operation on just flipping snakes and other reptiles, similar to what you'd see in like a wholesale operation. I actually put together a top 10 list of the pros and cons of flipping snakes. Some things you should consider before you decide to start flipping snakes or other reptiles. And the number one thing on the top of my list, it may sound pretty appealing, is that you can make some quick money. It may sound pretty good. You know, breeding ball pythons can be a little bit difficult, especially at the beginning, because a lot of times you actually have to wait for your females to mature. And sometimes that'll take two or three years. So especially in the beginning phases where you're putting all the money into your operation, you're not making anything, you may consider flipping some snakes, buying them and selling them. So here is the number two con for flipping snakes, and that is the risk of diseases and problems with the animals. And let me tell you, that's probably the number one thing that keeps me from flipping snakes. You know, with my YouTube channel, and I have a lot of exposure, a lot of people asking me almost every day, hey, do you have any snakes for sale? I could probably do pretty good just flipping snakes, buying them like at a wholesale cost, turning around and selling them over on Morph Market. But the number one thing that keeps me from doing it is diseases especially the mites that get on the snake. I've actually had mites here in my collection when I first started about five years ago. And let me tell you, they are really difficult to get rid of. And once you have mites in your collection, you really can't sell any snakes. You're pretty much dead in the water until you correct your mite problem. And let me tell you those things, they can crawl across the room, even out of the room and under the door. And you think you have them completely eliminated in your room. And one of them will crawl underneath the door and come back and infect your collection. Those things are kind of hard to get rid of and then there's also other diseases there are you know the the respiratory infections and other things like that and then there's another thing that can kind of trick you too if you're actually flipping snakes sometimes you can have some genetic defects that you may not catch right away so for example I've actually seen a lot of snakes with like a really small kink in the spine that's almost barely visible and if you actually buy a snake like that and then you turn around and sell it it doesn't really look good for you as a seller of that ball python. So number three is a pro. You can actually get a free snake. I've actually seen some people do this. They'll get on YouTube videos and say, hey, I actually got a free snake. And this is how I did it. I actually bought five snakes and then kept one of them, turned around and sold the other four at the same cost as I bought the five, which is kind of a good way to do it, especially if you're just starting out. And say, for example, you're actually looking at like normal ball pythons, <laughs> especially if you have you know an outlet to sell some of those snakes. Say you're at a reptile show or something something and you want to sell some snakes and you can unload them really quick maybe you can buy you know you sometimes you can actually buy them in bulk from someone selling them so if someone is actually selling say five normals and have them listed all on morph market say they're like fifty dollars a piece so it'd be like two hundred fifty dollars you may be able to offer $200, a $50 discount when you buy five snakes instead of the, the individual prices or just one at a time. So sometimes you can actually buy them in bulk and get a deal from some of these breeders and then turn around and sell them. I've actually seen some people do that. All right, so number four, this is another thing you really have to keep in mind, is you can get a bad reputation. Let me tell you, some people think it's unethical and some people think you don't care about the animals. I've actually heard some people talking at some of the reptile shows. As a matter of fact, I actually had one person come up to me and said, you know, what? I'm never gonna buy a, per a, a ball python from that breeder again, because I found out he's flipping snakes. <laughs> it's like the big taboo in the reptile industry. You don't want to be the guy flipping snakes you get a really bad reputation which is kind of interesting if you think about it so if you actually think about most of the retail stores in pretty much in the whole world if you actually go into like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or if you actually go into the mall almost every single store in the mall is flipping merchandise that's the way they make their money they buy it for a lower price 
mark it up a little bit, turn around and sell it, and then they take the profits to pay for the rent and the lights and the heating and their employees and on and on and on. Let me tell you, it can be, there could be a lot of expenses, especially if you're setting up like a retail shop trying to just flip merchandise. You have to be pretty good at buying and selling to actually come out and make a profit. So if you actually think about it that way, most people actually do flip things, but when you're talking about animals, sometimes it can get kind of a bad reputation because some people think you're kind of exploiting the animals for a profit. And even besides all that, I think it kind of has a negative connotation in the reptile industry specifically, even if you're doing it ethically. As a matter of fact, I've actually seen some reptile stores that are selling snakes at some of the reptile shows and the, the, they've been there for like two days and at the end of the, like the middle of the second day, they start running low on merchandise and there's still a lot of people at the show. So I've actually seen them go to other tables and buy up like 20 or 30 of their ball pythons at a discount, turn around and increase the price and then sell them like in the same show right across the other side of the show they'll actually just move the snakes from one end of the show to the other mark them up a little bit and sell them and some of these guys you know they're pretty well known in the reptile industry they have the stores and the reputation as being really friendly and really knowledgeable about everything if you have any problems you can always go back to them and sometimes you'd rather buy from them pay a little bit more money and buy from these guys and keep in mind most of your reptile stores are actually flipping snakes for a business. That's pretty much what they do. And I've actually seen some maybe a little bit dabbling in the back, breeding their own snakes and stuff like that. But I'd say for the most part, what they're actually doing is they're buying at wholesale, marking them up and then reselling them at the reptile stores. All right, so number five, you can actually get to see a lot of different snakes and a lot of different morphs in ball pythons, which I would think would be pretty cool. For example, here in my collection, I've never produced a completely scaleless ball python. I've actually seen some at the shows, and most of the guys that have scaleless ball pythons, they won't even let me touch the scaleless ball python. So I thought, you know, if you're actually flipping snakes and going through a whole bunch of different genes and morphs and combinations, you'd actually get to see them up front in person each and every individual gene and combination so i can almost guarantee that if you're flipping snakes at some point you'd get it completely scaleless or that one snake that you always wanted to hold in your hand even though it's just maybe for a few days that you can actually see it and hold it before you sell but i think it'd be pretty cool seeing all the different snakes in person up close which would be pretty cool all right, number six is a con. You risk getting scammed. That is one of the big things if you're actually flipping snakes. So for example, if you actually bought some hets that are het for a recessive gene. So for example, if you actually got into something like high end, like a het monsoon or a het sunset, and you're paying thousands of dollars for what looks like a normal ball python, and you're just trusting the guy that there is a gene in there, a recessive gene, one copy of a recessive, a recessive gene. And the problem is, is if you actually bought that snake, turned around and sold it, it would be like two or three years later that they would finally prove it out and see if that gene is actually in there. And if it wasn't, they would come back to you and you'd be the guy that seemed like you were scamming them out of that gene. Where, you know, if you're actually just buying and selling from all these different random people, you'd have to keep really good track of your records to figure out where those snakes actually came from. So I, th I would say there's probably a good probability that you could get scammed flipping snakes. That's one thing I'd watch out for. All right, so number seven, you could potentially increase your network. So if you were the guy flipping snakes pretty much full time, nonstop, you know, you would be the guy that, you know, if I'm looking for a snake, I can come to you and say, hey, do you actually have this snake for sale? Because I know you're flipping all these snakes. Or for the breeder, if you have a whole bunch of inventory and a lot of snakes, and you're, it's like if you're over on Morph Market, you're struggling to get rid of some snakes, you can actually go to a wholesaler, these guys that flip snakes for a living, and a lot of times they'll just buy every single snake that you have. And if you're a breeder, sometimes you just deal, you know, sometimes it's, a, it's an advantage. You're just dealing with one single person to unload all your snakes versus, you know, like going to Morph Market and shipping out each individual snake and dealing with like a hundred different people for a hundred different snakes. Sometimes it's a lot easier to just deal with one person. I would think you could really make a name as far as being the guy where you could actually find snakes and if you're actually one to buy and sell them to that person where he could actually buy your snake so you could definitely increase your network 
All right, so number eight is a con. You could actually lose money from an uncommon gene or snakes that don't sell or a drop in price. I've actually seen some prices drop incredibly fast, sometimes from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Prices for certain genes and combinations can drop significantly, and you could be left holding the bag, especially if that gene doesn't sell. And especially for really uncommon genes, that's another thing that you'd have to almost look at the market for the genes and I'm sure after a while you'd probably get the hang of as far as what is selling and what is not selling but if you bought something that was really expensive and you just couldn't sell it potentially you could lose some money all right, so number nine is a pro. You need less equipment, which is definitely an advantage, especially for a breeding operation. So if I was to do this, I wouldn't need my incubators. I wouldn't need my egg boxes. I wouldn't need my hatching mania. I wouldn't need my ultrasound. There's a lot of equipment that I have here in my ball python breeding operation that I wouldn't necessarily need if I was just flipping snakes full time. Of course, you'd still need some a uh, place to hold all your, your snakes. So you'd actually need like some racks or something like that but you wouldn't really need that much room depending on how much you expanded and how many snakes you bought and sold at once all right, so number 10 is a con. This is one of the big things. This is probably the other thing that I really wouldn't do a whole flipping snake process thing, and that is you expose a lot of snakes to the shipping process. And let me tell you, yeah, I would definitely prefer to sell at reptile shows versus shipping snakes through FedEx. It can be kind of hard on the snakes. Although I'd say, you know, flipping, selling snakes on, on FedEx, it's really super easy. Going over to Morph Market, taking an order, and just shipping it out. And for from what I've seen, very few snakes have any problems at all in the shipping process, especially if you ship from a FedEx center to a FedEx center. But you definitely avoid the potential for the trauma of shipping if you didn't flip snakes and just sold at your local reptile shows. So I guess what you could potentially do, you could flip snakes and still just sell at the shows, but I would think you'd probably have you know a limited number of snakes you can actually buy and sell just doing the shows because the shows are pretty much spread out. I, I think if you're actually flipping snakes, you would probably have to ship them all out through FedEx. So that is pretty much it. I don't know what Bobby's doing here around my neck, crawling around. He's like, I think he's about ready to fall down on the ground here. All right, Bobby, getting a little squirrely on this video. So that that is my top 10 pros and cons if you're thinking about flipping snakes, just a few things to think about. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.